Okay, hi everyone, welcome to this is not like a typical design session. This is just meant to like be a very short tutorial to show how to achieve this um, adaptive um we call it adaptive color invert button. That's really not the best name to go with, but then I think it describes what this button is doing the best. So you can see as I scroll through different sections, this button automatically changes color to to contrast against the background that it's um behind it. So when I move through like a white section, a black section, it's the button color is white. When I go to the well, gray section, it's black. And then when I go to the white section, it's also black as well. And then when I go to animate section, it turns negative. So you can see this effect is actually like a negative looking um, effect. So um, this button is just like a button that works on all sorts of sorts of um, backgrounds, at least all the backgrounds I've tested it on. I mean, there could be a lot more very unique use cases where it might not really show as much as you want it to. For example, when I go to scroll to specific sections of this image, I notice that it's not really looking as um, sharp. The text is not really looking as sharp as it should be. But then these are the small, small concessions you have to make because you can't always have perfection in all your work. But yeah, on most backgrounds, on most backgrounds, it always like shows really, really nicely. It always contrasts really nicely against them, its background. So I'm just going to show how to quickly achieve it inside of Figma. Typically, it's the basic idea is just actually blend modes, using blend modes. If you're familiar with blend modes, you can achieve this. However, I noticed that the, the uh, blend modes that Figma gives you does not uh, give you like um, robust use cases for your for your content um, like this. But I think that's where stacking of blend modes how it came into play. I had to like stack two different blend modes together to be able to achieve this particular effect you see now. So I'm going, just going to show that in a moment. And ideally where I really learned, where I really like applied this particular uh, effect on was navbar. So I wanted a navbar that could actually show across different backgrounds. I didn't want the navbar to be like just, when it gets a white background, I didn't want the navbar to like go uh, invisible. I wanted it to still be visible. So that's why I actually like um, learned this particular, or came up with this particular effect from. So without much ado, let's get into the meat of the, to this end. Session. Let me just quickly copy this plain button. This is a plain button, and I'm just going to paste it here. So this is just a normal button. Nothing crazy about it. It's just a 150 pixel button. It's big because I want you to see what, what's going on. And then it has like text and uh, icons out of it. And also the color, background color is black, and then the text color is white. Nothing crazy is going on currently. So let's get started with creating the frame. So to create the frame, I just want to just um, draw a, press A and draw a frame. I want to make the frame size 1440 because it's personal preference by its dead. So the next thing I want to call this frame viewport. Okay. And then I want to create a couple of backgrounds so I can be able to like test the button across the frame backgrounds. I want to create a couple of them. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle to fill the frame. And I'm going to call this rectangle. I'm going to call it um, BG for background. So I'm going to create a couple of duplicates. One, two, three, four just for the different kind of backgrounds I'm going to have. And then I'm going to auto layout them downwards. So you can see it's stacking downwards. Then I'm going to turn off clip content for the viewport. And then I want to change this uh, fill color to, to black. Okay, I want to change one to white, F, change one to, I want to add an image to this one. So this one should be like a black background, a gray background, a white background, and then an image um, kind of background. So we can test the buttons across different sorts of um, backgrounds. So I just want to open on splash. And then I want to quickly add an image to this frame here. So just give it a second to load up. Okay, interior, because I just like the look of interior. So I'm going to select a landscape one, landscape image. Okay, let's, <coughs> let's go for this one here. Let's go for this one here. Let's go for this one. So we're good to go. We're good to go with all our different kind of kinds of them. Um, background so we have the black the green the white and then the image so you can have a couple of more backgrounds like maybe colored ones so you can but then on color backgrounds sort of act weirdly but then let's not go into that for now it still works as it should on color backgrounds just like it changes inverts the color to give you another color but let's focus on this one so this is this is my button here typically when i drop it on this when i cop copy it and then paste it in this viewport you can see on this black, black background the obviously it's going to the black part is going to be invisible it's just the text that's going to show so i want to play so i can always be seeing what i'm actually doing so i want to centralize this centralize it okay get in touch so i want to centralize the button align vertical center align horizontal am i saying it pro properly but yeah so i've aligned it to center so you can see that it's not showing here and also i want to apply a scroll to the viewport so i want to click on the viewport and then 
apply a vertical scroll so that all these elements can scroll so let me scroll okay so the text i think the button has already already has a fixed position applied to it so that's why it's not it's not scrolling but then the background text is actually scrolling so you can see as i scroll through different backgrounds it's not adapting it's just uh, a normal button that doesn't it still remains black regardless of the background that you're on so this is not scalable on the run long run in terms of accessibility it probably will not work in this um, particular scenario i mean there could be a way for you in codes to achieve this effect but then it's like how to achieve it inside of figma so without much ado let's get to recreating so what i want to just do is just to duplicate this button so i want to create a, an inverted version of this button so you just want me to just change this button background to f and then change the items inside of it to black so i have two variations of it so the next thing i want to do is to put them put them over each other so i'm just going to put them over each other although i'm not going to put all the way so you can actually see what's them. Um, going on so i think i want to check because it's important i get the effect right okay so the black one should be on top then the white one should be okay cool so yeah the black one should actually be on top in the layers in the way it's arranged in layers. so i want to put the black one on top on top of the white one and then i want to apply blending mode so blending mode is basically this option here once you click on any figma any item in figma any object in figma you can only see this layer here this layer option here then it's typically normal or pass through by default but you can always mess around with it to achieve different um, uh, blending effects so here i want to change it from normal the black one keep, keep in mind the black button i want to change it from normal to um color dodge and then i want to change the this one here the one that's underneath to that's the white one to exclusion so for some reason this just this just works i have tried different blending modes and then i've achieved different results but then this is like the best one i think that works for this particular use case so i'm just going to select both of them and i'm going to align vertical and horizontal center so that they are uh, multiple perfectly sitting resting on each other so you can see they are resting perfectly on each other so i'm just going to select both of them and then make it a component so that it's scalable you create components no sorry create them um, oh boy create component here yeah. so with that done i'm just going to copy this component and then click on this one and then paste to replace yeah, so you can see that now I face it You can see how this background now it's actually changed to white. No why here it's actually black. So I'm just going to scroll through the okay, it's scrolling. So what I want to just do is just to go and click on the button, go to prototype mode, and then set it to set the position to fixed, stay in place. So it doesn't scroll away. So you can see as I scroll through the design, the color just changes based on the background that it's placed on top. So you can see it just has this really nice effect and it's always visible. It makes the elements, the text. Or the particular object always visible regardless of the background that it's um, placed on top so like i said before i normally apply this effect to my nav bar so i create two nav bars i create like a black nav bar a white nav bar then put on top of each other and then just apply this blending mode option make the black one make the black one a uh, color dodge they make the one underneath exclusion so it always works it always seems to work so for yours you can always go I'm crazy with the options and try out different um, uh, effects, try out uh, different options for the blending modes and see what results you get. So you can maybe click on the first one, then change from exclusion to, let's say, uh, hard light. So you can see hard light, what hard light, do, hard light still works on black background. So let's scroll and see if hard light actually works. So you can see hard light on a white background, it doesn't really work, but on other backgrounds, it kind of works. So hard light is not going to work for all backgrounds. So like I said, the one that I saw that works the most across different backgrounds is having an a uh, what's it called having a color dodge layer over an exclusion layer so it just um works um best okay the underneath one is exclusion here yeah. so color dodge on top of exclusion it works perfectly fine maybe not perfectly fine but then on most use in most use cases it always works so that's really the end of this um, tutorial it's very short it's meant to be very short and um, it's just meant to just go to straight to the point and show how to achieve this particular effect so if you have any questions while trying to recreate this Feel free to chat to me and um that's going to be all for this one i think this is really going to be the last <laughs> this is going to be the last tutorial for this year until next year so next year i intend to actually show how to achieve most of these things inside of webflow so that's going to be the next step for uh this weekly design thing it's going to be showing how to not just design them but also like implement inside of webflow or maybe any other no code tool that i can pick up um, before then so thank you for following along so far so good and um uh, see you next year and happy holidays Hi.